Hi everyone, welcome back to Noble Flowers. My name is Phaedra and with my husband Moroni, we flower farm in northeast Victoria in Australia and we sell retail. So today's video is part one of two parts. Today we will be prepping the flowers to get them ready to make bouquets. So I'm gonna talk to you all the way through this. I'm showing you in real time so you'll see how long this actually takes to prep flowers. We have two different modes of flower prep here on the farm. In the cold season, we buy our flowers from a wholesaler. And so you'll see me today prepping wholesale flowers. So they're in their plastic wrap and everything. And that's very different to how we prep our flowers the rest of the year because we're actually picking them directly from the farm prepping them out in the paddock and then bringing, in, bringing them into the flower studio. So later in the year when that's happening again, I will do another part to this series so that you can see the big difference between, you know, operating as a florist using a wholesaler and operating as a florist using your own flowers from your farm. Okay, let's get into it. I always wear gloves when I'm prepping flowers because they hurt my hands and I want my hands to stay nice. Actually, I might do the gerberas first. Trim your stems. Oh, we've got a stem that's probably been out of water here. Look, a bit of trim. Um, grab them out. Anyways, let's do a close up of this. Oh, I've got to cut my wires, hang on. I don't know if you know this, but on your secateurs, there's this little tiny notch here. You can use that to cut your wires. You poke it right in there and it's designed to snip wires and stuff. You're not going to blunt your circuiteers doing that. So you don't need a pair of wire cutters and your circuiteers. You can just poke it right up in that area. See that? Right up in there. Oh, come on. It's not going to focus on it, is it? Right up in there and cut. Oh yeah, here we go. I wonder if I can do four at a time. So this wire that I'm using, it's 0.9 millimeter. You can probably get away with a little bit thinner, um, but I just, this is what they had, so I bought it. Okay, so to wire, wire your gerbra, you poke it up into the back and it'll come out, right? You don't really want it poking out. So some people will pull it back so you can't see it. A florist friend told me that they, one of the girls that works for them, will pop it out slightly because the gerbers will continue to grow in the vase and then it will stay. I mean, it'll get hidden. So I don't know, sometimes I have it poke out a bit, but I think I like it popped back in. I forgot to actually show you how I wind that then. Okay, let's go again. Pop it up in there, just right there. You can feel it. So you can push it back down with your finger so you can't see it if you want. And then you just wanna wrap it and then twist. And I sort of bend that end bit a little bit more so it stays. And there you go. And then you can um, rearrange it a bit if you want. So that's gonna stop your heads drooping because when you look at the gerbra, see that really skinny bit here? So it's got nice thick stem and then it kind of gets skinny. Um, it just droops. They'll just droop from there at some point. So the wires will stop it from drooping. See, I'm using my finger. As soon as I feel it touch my finger, I stop. And I have a look at the stem about where I wanna start it and you twist it. And there we go. So I'll just speed this up now, get them all done. Jeez, I'm dropping flowers everywhere, aren't I? All right. If you've got one that's a bit like that, you can then use your wire to straighten it back up. I kind of 
twirl it looser across the top and then as I get further down the stem, the stem's a bit harder, I will twist it a bit more just to hold it. But that top section, you know, that top, see that one's already sort of a bit droopy. Um, this section here is very fragile, so I don't try, I try not to twist too much wire on that top section. It's just sort of one big twist to here. That's just wrapped once to that point, and then I wrap it a couple of times towards the bottom. And maybe you've learned a different way to do this. Maybe you've seen someone else do it a way that you like better. There are so many ways to do floristry. And then you can learn how to do it and then figure out your own way. You know, learn the rules and then figure out how to break them. There we go, they're all done. They look very pretty. Let's do Canterbury Bells. Look, they're a bit old. It annoys me so much. I know that's just the name of the game when you're buying wholesale flowers, but I just can't tell you how much it annoys me. <sighs> when you're used to working with your fresh flowers from your farm, like this is pretty yuck. Anyway, time for the gloves. I don't want my hands to get yucky. I'm not one of those farmers that likes their hands getting dirty. I like them clean. Right, so to prepare these, I'm some of these flowers, you're just gonna lose them. I'm just stripping stems. The other reason you wanna get your flowers out of the plastic quickly, like you don't wanna leave them in there for too long, is because it starts to kind of disintegrate. Like, look at this. Can you see that? You don't really want bacterias and mold or, you don't want the flowers breaking down on the plastic. Uh, I, I mean, I think they break down a bit quicker for starters. Hi everyone, I'm finishing up editing this video. I just wanted to drop in and say a really big thank you to Luce from Oxfordshire in the UK for buying me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com. I'm under Noble Flowers. Thank you so much. And I also want to thank a lovely lady from down in Tasmania who wants to stay anonymous, who purchased one of the Pay It Forward flowers. I will give you an update um, next week about where we took those flowers. Okay, these ones are going inside. So I'll just put them aside. Uh, try and keep your space clean. Because those ones have dropped like an oily residue, I, I mean, normally I just leave my, paper, my plastic just sitting there and I just do each one on top. Fold that over, you don't want that getting on everything else. Okay, stock. I actually, um, so this one's got five stems. You can still see it's got dirt on it. Uh, pretty fresh. I will get rid of leaves, sort of that far down. Probably that one too. You wanna leave a few. I mean, the benefit of leaving some foliage on your flowers is it's filling out your bouquet. Like it's adding bulk to help separate your flowers in the bouquet. So you don't want to take all the leaves off if you don't have to. And when I'm prepping flowers, I'll often take them, I'll even leave more. I mean, I'm going to use these today, but I'll use even more. And we're going to trim the stem. These are going in bouquets today, so I'm not going to trim much off, just a tiny bit so it can suck up the water. I should be putting these in fresh water, but I will put everything that I'm not putting into bouquets today in fresh water. But because I'm making most of it, probably use up all these flowers now, um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to put fresh water for now. I'll do that if anything's left over. Now this bouquet, while I was at the wholesale, it's actually got six stems. Look, one, two, three, four, five, six. 
So if you're in your wholesaler and you happen to notice a bunch that's got more than what it would normally have, just grab it. Um, I got a bunch of gerberas once. I had 11 stems instead of 10. This one's got six stems instead of five. It's just a bonus. And then every now and again, you'll get a bouquet where one of the heads is wrecked or it didn't have what you thought it was gonna have in it. Um, which is also always feels a bit annoying, but that's just how it is. Much, I, as, as you know, I'd prefer to just use my own flowers, but I love having the safety net and the option of using a wholesaler. I actually really love being able to use a wholesaler. It was a good decision. Okay, stock is done. Let's do... Okay, so I've been purchasing flowers that work out cheap per stem that I can sort of beef up a bouquet with because flowers are so expensive at the moment. I'll talk you through that once I've made, I've um, prepped most of these. I'm actually gonna pull the Lizzie's out. I might do the Lizzie's net now. Um, sometimes when the rubber band's that far down and I've got to trim stems, I just cut it off. I don't have to, I don't have to stuff around so much. All right, let's have a look at these. If you grow Lizzie's, so how many stems? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. There's actually five, but one I can split in half. So lower leaves come off. Um, any broken leaves come off because you don't, oh, look how flat that is. Sometimes you can plump the flowers back up again, make it look a bit more respectable. Um, but that's as much as I'll prep that. Just tidy everything up. Those leaves are smashed as well. Pull those ones off. Okay, so that's one stem. That's a, that's a $3 stem of flowers, by the way. That one stem, three bucks. Because a bunch of, well, actually it should be more like 350. A bunch of um, Lizzie's, that's 18 bucks. Okay, it's another stem. They look nice. So one, two, now this one, this, the, it's really down low where it branches off. So I can cut that off and I've just gained myself another stem, which is good. Take off those lower leaves. So we've got three stems. And where'd that other one go? Oh, there's another one. Ah. Let's clean that up a bit. That's another one. Lizzie's usually work out pretty good value. They've got nice vase life. They can be a bit fragile, just the way they squish up. But um, what are we up to? How many? One, two, three, four, five. And we've got a, one here. I reckon that's almost, I'm gonna leave it, but I might be able to cut that into two later. But I'm just gonna wait and see what bouquet I make. And same with this one, it's, I'm not sure if I want two short stems or one long one. All right, so what do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I turned that into seven stems when it was, oh, that one just broke off. So that answers my question. Turned it into eight stems. Um, so yeah. It's still $3 a stem, but at least it's a good $3 per stem. Oh, when will I learn the name of this? He, he camp them? I don't know. Every week you hear me mispronounce that. You would think I might look it up and get my crap together, wouldn't you? The thing I don't like about these is 
the stems, they just go so yuck. Look. Very like bruised. So there should be 10 stems in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep. So these work out to be about two dollars each. Okay, as I'm doing this, so this is my bucket of stems that are three dollars a head. This is my bucket of stems that are two dollars a head. So these would normally go in here, but it's getting a bit crowded. Um, these are all, th these are $1 a head. So I will just, I just dropped all those Canterbury Bells. I will set up buckets kind of roughly with their prices of what it's costing me. So I'm just gonna grab another bucket. Um, these don't need much prep. Sometimes the lower leaves look a bit disheveled. So I'll just pop them off. And every now and again, I'll see if I find one. You might find a berry, here's one. I need my other secateurs, hang on. I'll just use my flower snips because they're a bit finer. Every now and again, you'll get a, a berry that's broken. You just need to trim that off because it's not going to look very good. Because it's not going to look very good in someone's bouquet if they've got berries dangling off everywhere. These are already stripped pretty high. So, you just want to inspect every stem, make sure everything looks really good and pop it in your bucket. Now, normally I've got a holding solution in the bucket, but I've run out and we're prone to mold in the winter. So I've actually got a tiny bit of bleach in the water, like in a 10 litre bucket, I've put, you know, like a, a cap full of bleach. That's got a messed up leaf up high pull that off because you don't want people, your customers to, to be like, oh, these flowers look a bit young. There we go. That's them prepped. Um, we'll do the uh, freesias, which I love. And I need to get some in the garden next season. So that's probably where I'm going to spend some money in autumn, give them all a trim. Okay, so with freesias, most stems oh, will have the main flower head and then this little offshoot. I just snap those off. They will open in a vase. I'll put them in a little vase. You could use them in uh, floral foam arrangements as a short piece. You could use them in short vase arrangements, posy jars. You might use them for wedding work. Um, you can actually use these. At the moment, I've got nothing to use them for, so I'm just putting them in my house, which I'm happy about because I love these, they're so pretty. So anyway, put these aside. Don't chuck them out. Uh, freezers are really easy. You basically just, sometimes there's some lower leaves that you've got to peel off. This bunch doesn't have any. I don't know why but it doesn't and it doesn't matter. There's a little leaf there. You want to get that off. You can probably snip that. Ugh. They, they can get a bit tangled and they're very fragile. So do it carefully when you pull them apart. Um, probably best practice is to cut that, not rip it. But I'm going to be trimming these little ones again and um, that could end up trimmed in the bouquet anyway. Sometimes there's just a toss up between how long it takes and I mean, realistically, um, it's not gonna hurt the flower to just cut it like that. I mean, to break it off, it's fine. That's got a really long side shoot, that one. But yeah, those side shoots, they will open as well. That freeze is gorgeous. We've got another bunch of freesias to do. All right, so it's if you're picking these from your garden, same thing, like you wanna prep your flowers properly. Get that off there. The other reason I like to just clean the stem up and not have this side piece on there, because I could put that in the bouquet, 
but um, pulling the flowers out of the buckets it gets snagged and caught up it's just another thing that takes time when you're trying to untangle see how this is kind of gets tangled it's just my preference because I'm sure oh, that snapped on the wrong spot so we're just going to clean that up it's still long enough oh look this is what I'm talking about you don't want to leave that so just snip it off don't let pieces hang off your flowers that are broken and then once you've got your bouquet ready just check it again too okay things are getting messy here where I'm snipping that one's clean this one's caught these are actually pretty long freezes, I've got to say. All right. Just trying to think how much this bunch of freezes cost me. I put them in a $2 stem. So, okay. Now these are carnation chins. So these, this bunch is pretty cheap. Like, it's something like $7.80. For all of this, there should be 10, 10 stems in there, which means I can I clean it up, pull all the side shoots off. The only bugger with carnations are they're not always easy to strip, and it can be really easy to lose grip and go the wrong way, and then you pop the head off by accident. So you've got to be careful. <laughs> anyway, I should get 10 stems and it works out. So I'd, I'll then put them in as a dollar each. All right, so you want to. <laughs> When you're stripping like that, if you're not pulling them off individually, like really get a good grip here so you don't accidentally strip it in the opposite direction and knock the heads off. Ah, oh, or do that. See that? You've got to be real careful. That's still long enough to use. I'm lucky. Um, so probably the best way to strip your carnations, which is time consuming, is to pick each Pick each one off. What a pain in the butt. What a pain in the butt I hear you say. That, that's a bit low for me, I'm pulling it off. But you could leave it on there to add bulk to your bouquet. Help your flowers be separated. That works fine too. Whatever, I mean, you need to figure out your style of flower arranging or bouquet making or Market bunch making, whatever it is that you're doing, this one's broken, I can't use it. And sometimes that will happen with any flowers, like from your field or, I guess it hurts less when it's from your field because you haven't paid so much money per stem. But anyway, you have paid money, but not as much as at the wholesaler. Ah, oh, I did it again. Because at the wholesaler you're paying for the farmer, uh, the flower market, and the wholesaler. Everyone's got to put their price on it. Which is why you can make so much profit if you grow your own flowers. Because you're cutting out all those middlemen or middlewomen, whatever you want to say. Carnations have this junction point, up their stems, here and here and here, uh, that are really fragile. So you just need to be careful. All right, they're done. Okay, we're getting there. So $2, these are $1, so I need another bucket. They will go with the um, thryptamine because thryptamine is, I put a dollar a stem on it as well. All right, put those there. That's my dollar stemmer. Now let's start working through some of this. Okay, so this is the Luke Kendron. I don't bother trying to get the rubber bands off anymore. I just cut them, it just wastes time. Okay, it's really easy to strip. 
Sometimes I'll keep these little side pieces to make small things with. This one is as easy as just strip it down. These are three dollars a head though. How many stems are I got? One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see at the end because I'll be able to get a few extras out of this. So I got 11 stems, so they'll work out to about $1.50 each, which is good. And now I'm going to work on these disc buds, which is just taking the plastic off. I take all the paper heads off because it can cause them to kind of sweat and go mouldy. And I use them pretty quick. Like, I mean, they could all be gone by the end of the day. So I'm not holding them in a cooler. And then I'm, I just take a few of those leaves off. That's it. And I've trimmed the stems. I did that while you weren't looking. How sneaky. Just let me grab this out while I'm putting things, because that's next. Disc buds are imported. They're dyed and imported. And if you watched my reel last week on Instagram, I put up a little piece about how there's some florists some ecoflorists, which ecoflorists are great. They're trying to, you know, do their bit for the environment. But I think we all are in our own ways as well. Anyway, there was there's some florists attacking other florists that are using um, imported flowers or dyed flowers. And I just don't see the need for it. I mean, if you want to be 100% ecoflorist, go and do it. Well, that's great. Whereas, I mean, our, we're doing our bit by, we literally grow our flowers in our backyard. We just can't do it all year. And I'm sure the eco florists that are getting snarky online probably drive cars. And they're probably not picking their own flowers from their backyard. I mean, at some point you're gonna have to buy from somewhere. So, I mean, just do your best. Don't, you don't have to get snarky at other people about what they're doing. Focus on your own thing. So anyway, my dyed disc buds that everybody loves. And we don't hide the fact that we buy these and they're imported and they're dyed. We're not trying to trick anyone. Everybody knows. Well, if you ask. If you don't ask, I'm not gonna sort of go out of my way to point that out to everyone. because. For some people, buying flowers is a transaction. They just want their flowers and they want to go. Why do I need to stand there and notify them of everything? I just don't. Anyway, um, ornamental kale. We are not going to have this for much longer. And you can see their heads elongating. Um, I dare say wherever they're growing, it's starting to get a bit warm for them. We've got ours in. We're just waiting for ours to get, like our stems to get longer. But yeah, this is shooting from the middle of the, the bloom. All right, uh, before we do the thryptamine, which I hate doing, I bought Heath, listen to this. Doesn't it sound so gorgeous? Look at it. So I have not used this before, so I'm not sure what we're expecting here but you can experience it with me. What have we got? So we've got one, two, three, four, five stems, which is pretty standard, but they've got side shoots. So we're gonna get more than what we're expecting off this. I, I haven't looked at the price I paid for this either. I'll have a look. I should bring my invoice out when I do this, shouldn't I? So there's a stem. There's a, a lot of side shoots here that are too small to use. But it's so pretty, I don't want to chuck it out. But watch me, I'm chucking it out. <laughs> okay, I think that 
is just so pretty. How amazing is that? I'm not going to get as many stems off this as I get off the thryptamine, that's for sure. It's just not going to happen. But I saw it there at the wholesaler and I thought, I'm going to, go, I'm going to get that. When I like to try things I haven't tried before because as I mentioned in a previous video, you will get a, a feel for what flowers you want on your farm and what you like working with. Some of these things are so cheap to bite the wholesaler though, I wonder if it's worth us trying to grow it. Like Thryptamine. We've got plants, but I don't know if it's worth us trying now because we can just buy it so cheap. Doesn't this sound like Christmas or something? It sounds so pretty. This is a pretty, pretty, pretty flower. Okay, how many stems did I get? Got a couple of little ones I'm gonna take inside. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, a massive one, which I'll obviously charge more for, seven, Eight. So I got eight, like, let's say one dollar stems and a big one. I reckon I'll put three bucks on that one because it's the biggest one there. Okay, we're on to thryptamine, the worst of them all. It's so pretty, but what a pain in the neck to, what a pain in the butt this one is. It's because you can't run your hands down it. It doesn't strip. You have to, let me bring this over here so you can see what I'm doing. You have to do it all separate. It takes so bloody long. If I've bought heaps of it, I can be here for a good half an hour just stripping tryptamine. The good thing is it's very cheap, even though I think you need to probably add some more money to it take into account how long it just took you to strip it and prep it. Um, but I will put it at about a dollar a piece. So this one here, you can see there's this really long shoot here, this one. I'm actually going to snip that off and that's going to give me just a normal size, a normal length piece and then another sort of normal-ish size piece. So you've kind of got to get good at figuring out where to trim things to make the most of your piece. But yeah, you see how annoying this is to strip? I'm gonna leave that one. Pieces like that will strip but the big branches will not. This one's got some weird stuff in it. Let's chuck it out. Oh, it's not that usable really. I'll be able to use that a little bit, not that. Oh gosh. Yeah, some things are just a bit tricky. Let's speed this up. You don't want to watch this. You've seen me do this if you've been watching for a while. If you haven't, I'll link your video. So you can watch me strip thryptamine. How exciting. leave my tryptamine there for a minute. Pick up all my plastic. This is one of the another one of the worst things about having to buy flowers. You get a lot of plastic waste. Let's reset for bouquets.
for everyone. That's us prepped. So this is part one. If you would like to watch me now turn this into bouquets, I'm gonna pop up a part two where I, in real time, make, the, make all of these flowers into bouquets. So I'll see you there. Bye.